know you guys probably can't see anything here. I'm gonna try to get a light. Okay, so I hope you guys can see something, at least this GoPro does terrible in the light, I know that. But uh, we are actually back pulling the transmission out. So I just finished like two videos. There's two videos that are gonna go up probably before this one. One would be regarding the bell housing, I believe, and the other one being a trailer. Um, so this truck needs to drive. So we are in a time crunch. It's Thursday right now. I have a car show that was supposed to be out today. It didn't happen. I'll explain why later. I'm um, gonna have another one I absolutely need to be at on Saturday. So that's kind of my kicking the butt to get this thing done. So the transmission is coming out right now. I already have a clutch on order or I will possibly use this clutch depending on what goes on. Um, but if I, I believe I mentioned I have to put the stock bell housing back in. This bell housing is, I'll give you a brief rundown of what's going on. So the, this bell housing uses a 157 tooth, 28 ounce flywheel. The starter is lined up for that. The engine back and plate is lined up for that. And the stock bell housing, which I'm putting back in it is meant for a 164 tooth, 28 ounce flywheel. And so if you can kind of put that together, one's a smaller diameter and the starter will not work with this 157 tooth flywheel. It's kind of one thing I, I thought about last minute. It was just kind of a stupid brain fart I never even thought about. So we have to put um, a different flywheel in this thing, which really sucks because I have the McLeod flywheel in the center force clutch. I'm hoping I can at least use the clutch. Um, I believe it's a 10 or a 10 and a half inch clutch. Um, and then I, I just got to figure out what works and what doesn't. So we're pulling this thing off. I'm going to take some measurements, get a flywheel ordered overnight tonight. It's going to be super expensive, but just have to get it done. So I'm super tired and I'm really pacing. I know, um, but we've already got the truck jacked up. It's been like 15 minutes working out. We're just getting it jacked up in the air. Sam's pulling the drive shaft out right now and he pulled the shifter out and then I'm going to get underneath and actually pull the transmission out itself. Um, so we're going to pick cross member out, two bolts on the cross member. I'm going to have a jack holding it up, four bolts on the trans, slide it out, um, and then buzz the bell housing and the clutch and the flywheel off, and then hopefully get the measurements tonight, get it ordered, and put it all back together tomorrow. I hope, hopefully, let's hope this works. Oh my gosh, I hope this works. Just has to be done by three o'clock on Saturday. That's my only goal. So I have like two days to get this thing completely done. Might like to get it done tomorrow, but we'll see. So yeah, it is up on jack stands. Not as hot, not nearly as high as we had it the first time, um, but this will just make it a little bit easier. Sam's getting that drive shaft out, taking the four bolts, and then we'll just slip that out. Um, everything up top is already taken off. You can see the shifters out, and then the cover over here. I got comments saying, why do I have a Chevy symbol covering that? Well, we were in a rush as well, so we just slapped two pieces of tape on it, it just came out that way. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get underneath this thing. Hopefully I can do it really, really quickly once the drive shaft's out. Um, I'm gonna put, I think, a rubber glove over the tail seal. I'm not gonna drain the transmission fluid. I hope this thing doesn't spill all over the place. I believe it has a new seal on it, so it shouldn't be too terrible. It'll drip a little bit, um, but I'm just hoping it doesn't pour out of the tail seal because uh, I really do not want to take the transmission fluid back out of this thing. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get this thing out, hopefully pretty quick. I'll explain what's going on and I'll come back probably tomorrow and we'll get this thing hopefully back together. I can make a better update. But baby, I'm here and I'm watching you move. There's just one thing you should know. Girl, you are my fire. I'll meet you desire. The pork doesn't look bad. I don't see any what sort of bad wear on that. I don't know. You guys can see it. I can't see anything right now. Um, but that looks fine. I don't see anything wrong with that. Throw bearing. This is what's going to be really messed up. So the face of it is still greased, which is good. So that means it was wearing right there fine. That is terrible. Keep in mind, I put less than 30 miles on this thing. And we have shaft play in this thing terribly. You should not be able to, if you can spin it completely free like that, or it makes that noise, throw it in the trash can. It's not worth putting in. So that's bad. Uh, you can see these clips right here on the sides, they shouldn't be able to do that either. Uh, they should be a lot stiffer than that. They can move, but not not like that. Uh, so those are bent. And yeah, look at that. You can, you can actually see it. That is bad. So that thing is going in the trash can. I have another one. Um, let me look at the clutch, because that's really what's concerning me. And I don't see any wear on the fingers that concerns me, which is good. So the clutch in this thing's still fine. The pressure plate and the clutch look fine. Okay. I wonder how the pilot bearing looks. But yeah, I guess uh, we should just buzz this thing off, huh? Yeah. So I gotta take the starter out. I'm not having off. I have less than 30 minutes to get this thing completely off. Happens. You so. want me to get down there and help you, or do you want me to just be Nurse Sam right now? You can just be Nurse Sam. He's gotten dirty enough. Okay. Okay, so I had to take all this stuff off so I can measure the wear. You see the wear marks, those are what I needed to measure. So I'm gonna take that measurement. We're gonna go inside, go in some and order something. 
it'll fix this whole issue. Hopefully this works. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we are back with day two or night two or whatever you want to call it. I don't really even care at this point. So we're back. Um, last night I went in and I measured the clutch diameter. It was 10 and a half. So this is the, the clutch. This is a 10 and a half inch disc. I'm in pressure plate set up. So this thing seemed to have no weird wear on it, which is awesome. So that means I didn't really mess up there. And my only issue was with throw out bearing, which I already have a new one of. And so I'm kind of going to explain now the whole predicament of why I'm in this situation. Um, so it really comes down to why I restored this bell housing, which I talked about in the video, which is why I'm doing, I redid this bell housing. Um, so just a brief explanation of that. If you didn't see it in the other video, I was running an American powertrains uh, small block forward to TKO bell housing, which is a seven inch depth instead of the six inch that this thing has. And that allows you to run the larger input shaft from that transmission. However, that bell housing accepts a 157 tooth flywheel. I am running the original one, which is a 164 tooth. That only, this bell housing will only accept a 164 tooth flywheel. Otherwise the starter position is too far outward and the starter will not engage the teeth on the flywheel. It'll be too far apart. Um, the diameter change is like between a 157 and 164, I think is about a half an inch, if that. But it's just enough to where the starter will not engage. So I had to start completely over. And so as you can tell, there's my old clutch. The flywheel is still in the truck right now. And then I have these parts here. So this is another new flywheel, not a new flywheel, but a resurfaced fly flywheel. I just got done today. I went ahead and I took it out uh, to a local shop in town today and got this thing resurfaced. So this is actually, believe it or not, this is my original flywheel that came out of the truck. You can see the Fomico right there. I'm not sure if this is the original original, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was. So it's kind of nice that I get to put the thing back on because I know it was on there before everything worked. However, I We'll insert a clip of what it looks like before. Look at that. And heat cracked all the way around. So I don't know if that was me or if this is just 160,000 miles worth of other people and me. Um, and now you can see it's nice and clean at least, but if you look really, really close, you'll get a flashlight out. You can see there's heat cracks throughout the entire thing. It's not very bad over here. It's not very bad, and then right around here, you can start to see all those little cracks. Hope you guys can see those. All the... It's really just right here. Uh, this side has almost none, um, So, but there are a few right here, uh, which means this thing's definitely on its last limb. Uh, I did need to get another one. And like I said previously, I did actually order another one, so I have another one on the way, so don't freak out that I don't have a bell house. I'm not running a new one. Um, but however, like I said earlier, I am getting to a car show this Saturday, no matter what. It is Friday night right now. The car show is at three o'clock tomorrow. I have to have the entire truck back together and driving. Keep in mind, I've driven the truck once, it broke four times in that one drive. So I have to make sure that I can get this thing running, driving, reliable, and get it to the car show. The car show is only a couple miles away, which is nice, but however, I need to make sure that this thing is good enough to get over there. So because I ordered that flywheel off of Summit, I did not want to shell out the extra 40, 40 to, it was like 45 bucks for an extra on top of what the flywheel costed, which would have ended up costing me probably over $300, which I just wasn't down to spend considering I'm spending so much money on so many other things right now. So it's probably not going to be here until late tomorrow if I'm lucky. And I don't think they ship Sunday and it'll probably end up being here on Monday, which I just can't do if the car shows Saturday. So my only resort was to take my original flywheel, which I hate doing because it was just so destroyed. I went out to a local place in town, paid 30 bucks to have the guy resurface it. He was super, super nice. Did it in 30 minutes. I literally drove to, to a store and came back and he called me, came back, picked the thing up and it actually looks decently usable. It has got these cracks along it, which is just something that you can't really, you don't want to have. If you're pushing a lot of horsepower, these cracks are all weak spots that can make this thing legitimately explode so it's not very good to have those however we are running like a 240 horsepower engine just in case you guys are curious i believe my truck only makes a little over 200 horsepower um i don't think it makes that much power it just sounds really nice i guess but to get us to the car show this will work so we're gonna go ahead and put this take the mcleod flywheel off the thing put this one back on bolt that new clutch which we got a brand new 11 inch clutch which that will go on. That's actually a lot bigger than that one, has a lot more surface area. Uh, so this clutch actually should work quite well and I'm really excited to see how it does. This truck had an 11 inch on it when I took the, th the three speed out originally. That was a 10 and a half. So I'm actually going from a 10 and a half to an 11 inch. So good and bad. That's like a house brand, that's center force. It's a little bit nicer, but 
uh, either way, everything will work. But right now I've got everything set up still from last night. I did not touch anything. The dogs are still just as annoying as they were yesterday and I need to take the flywheel off. So I'm probably gonna go get my impact and blow that thing off real quick. Uh, get that out of the way and just instantly just dive right into this and get that other flywheel and everything back on I'm gonna get right into putting this thing together. You guys have seen that a hundred times So I'm just gonna set it up in like a time-lapse mode um, You guys have seen me put the bell housing and all the other flywheel and clutch nonsense on if you haven't go check out my five-speed videos I've done this five or six times now. <laughs> so let's get right into it I don't usually go out this late at night To the place where the animals go but baby, I'm here and I'm watching you move There's just one thing you should know Girl, you are my fire I will make you desire you Girl, you are my fire Alright guys, so drive shaft slid in. Uh, I had a little mishap again with the clutch fork. If you're putting it in, just I was stupid and forgot to put the clutch fork on the throwout bearing before I put the whole thing together. So there was no way I could get, I could either mount the clip onto the belt housing, or the fork onto the belt housing, or the fork to the, to the throwout bearing, but I couldn't get both of them at the same time. So I had to take it all apart, slide the trans back out, put the uh, throwout bearing on the fork, and then go ahead and slide it all together in one big piece. So now, you can see we have no up and down movement and we have a perfect back and forth movement. That's exactly what we want. So that's good. Everything's working. It's all torqued down, cross members back in. So I already had this thing out one, once, uh, twice today. Um, so it's back in. Now I just got to hook up the rear drive shaft, uh, my actual clutch linkage itself, put the starter back in, the exhaust on, the shifter back on, and we're good to go. All right, so everything's back together. I kind of just skipped all the stuff you've seen a million times. Starter's in, I went with a different starter, the starter that was in the truck before, way back when I had the three speed. Everything should work, should. Crossing my fingers should. I felt the clutch, clutch is really, really light. Um, that's good and bad. It's a just an O'Reilly's brand clutch, so it's a really, really kind of just oh well clutch. Uh, but it is 11 inch, which is a plus. But the thing is, is it's nice and, it's still pretty stiff, but you can tell it's a lot better feeling than when it felt before. Before you literally had to like two foot this thing. It was terrible. So if I'm correct, I should be able to put this thing and turn it over and it should fire up. Um, I might have to give it a little bit of gas, but I'm just trying to think. Yeah, no, everything should be good. started in two or three days so that's pretty good for not even touching the gas we're moving again I am gonna put the exhaust back on this time so just in case you guys are wondering uh, we're actually gonna try to actually drive the thing properly maybe get some pulls in but uh, I need the exhaust on so we're gonna get all this stuff on Actually, like for once, I actually put something together and it might just work. <laughs> wow. Did it feel good? Yeah, no, it felt really good. The clutch grabbed right at the normal spot where it used to grab. 
Everything feels how it was when I took the truck apart with the three speeds. So that's really, really good. Um, everything feels promising. Truck is running great, which is really good. But uh, now I guess we can just clean everything up underneath it and put it on the ground. And then I gotta move some stuff on the opposite side of the house just to get the truck out, which is gonna be a chore. Um, and then we'll get this thing on the road. We're first gonna, I wanna put the exhaust on right now. That's what I am gonna do before. Um, and we'll get this thing on the road and actually start driving it. Update, guys. It's together, Sam. Now he's gonna jump it off this thing. Hey, Sean! 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 Hey, John. You're good. You're good. Oh! Oh! Why does it look lower? Why does this truck look lower? It does that every time. Oh, that's already. Yeah, the eagle boost rumble. Alright, now we're gonna keep riding around. Listen to the turbo school. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if Sam's here, Sean's here, Elizabeth's here, Travis is here. I don't have enough gear on my tranny because for some reason it just doesn't like to have enough you don't need gear that stuff. Only import here. I can hear him. You think he's going to do a flyby? Rev off in the Miata. He's going to do dudes. a pull. Is the Miata straight piped? No. It's full stainless exhaust. I hear him. Travis, move. Can you two are the two import boys here? <laughs> wow, he was moving. He needs four tens. That's all you hear. <laughs> yeah, it actually works. <laughs> Don't rev near the car. I know, that's why I didn't rev it. Don't rev near the car. It's gonna get exhaust on you. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that thing is so smooth. Like everything is just, I don't even know how to describe it. It seems geared too long. Well, it's got a 350, isn't it? Yeah. 355, isn't it? Why does the front end seem lower now, Craig? Why does it, does it seem lower? Oh, it does that every time we take it off the jack. Yeah, it's weird. Look when, it, it. when it sits on jacks for like a month at a time, you set it down, it just like gets like way lower. It's weird. It actually works. I'm so stoked right now. I smell all the gear oil burning off everything else. Um, it's pretty much full of fluid. I need to put a hair more in it, but I'm sorry. I just couldn't resist. I was pretty dumb, but I, don't, I know. I'm sorry. I have my piece of junk back. Finally. Nice. Okay, so the truck is no longer in its resting place. I'm super, super stoked that everything worked out so far. Um, I really hope this mic isn't broken, but uh, it like fell, so hopefully the audio works. Um, if not, I'm gonna have to put text over everything. 
So right now we're cleaning the wheels because uh, they need to be cleaned dry, and then I'll wash all the dirt off after. Sam's helped me. He's Mr. Detailing God, if you could see his Corvette. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, he does have cutouts. <laughs> You can see how dirty this thing was. So I'm gonna take it super easy on the way over there and just drive it back um, and just, I'll probably do a couple little bit of maintenance things tomorrow and then we'll actually kind of beat on it a little bit because everything's getting broken in still. But I am so happy to have my truck back, oh my goodness. My patina increased over these last three months. <laughs> yeah, I don't wanna really talk about that. Yeah, I got good floors though. It's gotta be quick action. So you have to have water to use this stuff? Yeah. So we're using some Black Magic stuff, tire cleaner. It's only like four bucks, so. You wanna, you have white tire riding and you wanna clean these things up really well, go to the store and get some of this stuff. All right, we're getting ready to go. Dang, just taking that front end I haven't seen in so long. My old buddy Mater is all cleanish, kinda not really now, and I'm happy. And then I'm, yeah, and we're going to the car show. We're driving. Yeah, let's do it. Hell yeah. Oh my God. We are actually driving it and it doesn't totally suck. So you guys can see our current lineup to get in is quite a big weight. Looks like everyone's back there. It's looking pretty good. It's gonna take a second for us to all get situated. So I'll catch up to you guys when we're parked. That's our friend Mark Stahl. I'll introduce you to him in a second. He's driving uh, Ivan Stewart's old truck, I believe. Uh, he's, I think, restored the whole truck. He said, I'll, I'll let him explain, but uh, restored it and now he just uh, races the thing and it's pretty sweet. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. This was super, super awesome that I finally got the truck finished. I spent a lot of time and a lot of money getting this thing working. I've spent all this time getting the thing put together. I've had the thing in the transmission and another truck probably about five or six times. Way so, too long. Yeah, way too long. Finally got it back together. Um, this has been a three month project, way too long. It's, been, it's supposed to be like a weekend project. We yeah. got it back together. So thank you guys for your support. It means the world to me. Thank you for everyone behind me that has helped out with the project, especially Sean, he's put a lot of hours into it. And then Franklin helped, a couple other guys helped. 
everyone helped. It was a really, really fun project. So thank you guys for that. Smash the like on the video. That it actually got a driving and it didn't break. That's a plus. But we'll get more driving stuff in the yeah. future when it actually doesn't feel like it's going to break. Kind of feels like it's going to break, but it's not going to break. So like a video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget below. to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> We're going to make some cool videos with it in the future. I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. I hear him. Travis, move. Can you two are the two import boys here?